Hi, I'm Sven Hosford at St. Clara today with Dr. Safdar Chaudhry, who is the medical director here at this wonderful facility. And we're going to spend just a couple minutes today talking about the mind-gut connection. Not just the mind-body connection, but the mind-gut connection. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So, what we know about the mind-gut comes from our experiences first. Is that right? Yes, so it's very common to know that if you're feeling nervous, we have a butterfly feeling in our stomach or a knot in our stomach. And in an extreme situation, people have some acidy feeling in their, in their mouth. And or some people actually can have diarrhea or, you know, the upset sure. stomach. Doc Severinsen on The Tonight Show used to vomit before every performance of The Tonight Show. I that's didn't right. That. But he was well, always nervous every, every performance. That's right. So we all know that those are very commonly connected symptoms between what's on our mind and the anxiety and how our, our gastrointestinal tract behaves. Do we see how the mind affects the, the guts? That's right. So that's a very common knowledge. What's not known is that if these things are allowed to continue, that they can become gradually significant problems. And so many conditions such as gastric ulcer, ulcerative colitis, uh, and conditions which have inflammatory-based uh, disorders actually can be from an excessive stress. So we're now seeing diseases created, not just discomfort, but real diseases created from basically purely what we're thinking. That is correct. That is correct. And, and, and many of us then really make a disconnect and we begin to get more specialty care, which is okay but really are not making that connection between what's the causative factor. And, and, and millions of dollars are being spent on medicines, uh, unnecessary procedures uh, for fixing the end symptom, right. but not looking at what's causing those symptoms. Right, right, right. Uh -huh. And can't those, some of those medications actually make the situation worse? Yes. Uh, so our stomachs are supposed to have an acidic environment so that they can digest what comes down the pike and then make them more, more easily absorbable down in the small intestine. And then our intestine have some bugs which are healthy bugs. And by taking all these medicines, we are really creating an additionally unhealthy environment, both in our stomach and both in our guts. So we're making it even more difficult for our digestive tract to do what it's supposed to do. Absolutely. I mean, digestive tract, I just want to kind of add a plug-in uh, comment there. Um, we're supposed to eat in a manner that our body, our, our mouth can break it down to small pieces so that some glands are pumping in. It's almost like if you're going through a car wash, there's a process of the car wash. You know, there's a process of getting it all soaked up, then cleaned up and all rubbed and then dried out. We, we don't allow our you know, mouth and our guts to do those due processes. Mm -hmm. uh, so we eat in hurry, we eat on the run, and uh, on, a different, on, a, on a different note, we don't even know what we are eating when we are, when we are running. But nevertheless, um, our, our regular body mechanisms, when they're not given the chance to clean up the, 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 the food that we eat and do it properly, it creates great, great pathologies and discomforts. So what I find interesting is that here you are as a psychiatrist talking about how we eat our food. And that just the function of chewing is so important to mm. our mental health. Yes. That is, that is really, uh, you know, understanding the mind-body connection to a much deeper level now. Absolutely. And it kind of really reconnects me to, in, in medical school, we were taught what's normal first. Mm -hmm. We needed to know our anatomy, our physiology, and how things function, and how the biochemistry of the body. And then we were taught how the problems can create different symptoms. So I think for all of us to know how the normal body works is very important. But that's so difficult in today's world because so few people are actually normal. I mean, fully functional, let's say, yeah. or, or yeah. functionally optimally. Right, yeah. Well, we are living in a very difficult times. 
Uh, we have a lot more people who are struggling with multiple stressors, whether it's the economical stressor, issues surrounding their children or families, and or, or really the basic pace of life has gotten to be very high pace. And thus, what really are important elements to stay healthy, they are really very unhealthy. Uh, and thus the diseases and disorders, and then we run to our hospitals as our last resort. So really, just the what you're suggesting is to take the, the time and digest your food slowly, be mindful about how you eat, not just yes. what you eat, but how you eat. Yes, yes. So, so there's actually a lot of research uh, 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 findings coming out at this time. We are actually calling our guts as our second brain. The second brain. Yes. Um, so one on top of our head up here, which right. we already know, and we are calling our guts a second brain. and close to 80 or more percent of the serotonin, which is the happy compound. Serotonin, the feel good. Yes, is in the, yeah. actually is in our guts. Now that is, is that fairly new, scientifically understood? Well, that, that serotonin is formed in the guts? Because I think most people think serotonin is a, f a function of the pituitary or some other endocrine yes. system. Yes, well it is, in a, it's a, one of our neurotransmitters in the brain. We became knowledgeable about that as the newer antidepressants came in the market mm -hmm. and they were functioning to, to regulate the serotonin systems in the brain. What we never were taught or I wouldn't say taught, what made aware during our everyday conversation to the, to, the, to the media was that a lot of that is already happening in our guts. But since that's not the focus of attention, we just don't know that, but, but these but the, uh, the physicians know that. Uh, now we are connecting the dots of the fact that how that being up and down can affect our, 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 our systems of not only emotion, but our guts. So this is a whole new conversation now that we can have, and we'll do that next time yeah. we sit down. And that's basically that we've always known how our mind can affect our guts, like mm -hmm. we just talked about. Now we're gonna learn how our guts changes our mood and our mind. Absolutely, that's a huge new science. Actually, very exciting science. Very exciting. Yes, uh, I think that the research at some of the largest uh, centers in, in US and, and around the world is about food and its effects on our mood. And the simplicity, because our bodies already know how to heal. We just wanna give them the right environment, the right nutrients, and the miracles are waiting to happen. A very exciting time to be practicing medicine. It's it? beautiful. That's it's great. just making my life easy. I know that much. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for talking with us today, and we'll be back again next time. And from St. Clair. Thank you. I appreciate this opportunity.